Hey, welcome back to Shotoku Tech. As you might have gathered from my recent video, TTGO T Display, use the ESP32 Flash tool to update the firmware. I updated my TTGO boards with the latest firmware because I was going to make new TTGO T Display videos. The objective today is I want to build a web server that responds to the two buttons on the TT Go and displays a result based on whichever button is pressed and then that will also update the web page that is served by the web server. And this is going to combine the examples all free fonts, hello server, and multiple buttons. So let's take a look at where those are. So when we look under examples, all free fonts, so when we look under examples I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom here into the TTGO T display and this is the 320 by 240 and you see that all free fonts there. Again you're going to want to watch my previous video here about managing boards and libraries in the Arduino IDE if you don't have these options as examples in your Arduino IDE you'll want to go through the steps that I outline in this video here. So the other segment of this is examples and there's the web server and we're just going to use the hello web server. It's very simple. There's no authentication and it's really just sending a single word or phrase. And then we're also going to use button two and this is going to be the multiple buttons code. So those three hello server, multiple buttons and the all free fonts demo are going to come together in this code here and let's just step through this code just a little bit so basically yeah like I've rolled all this together so <laughs> and I want to get down to it so you've got some Wi-Fi components that are inherent in this so we're going to connect to Wi-Fi there's free fonts and you have to make sure the free fonts is in the same folder as your INO in uh, the Arduino IDE then there's a couple of TFT and SPI libraries and there's the button 2. Here we're initializing button 2, here we're setting up button 2 and establishing a string variable text with the value of 1. Here we're going to connect to the Wi-Fi network, use your password not mine. Then we go on to, this is the web code that handles a successful client connection. It basically sends the HTTP code 200 meaning hey you connected all right and then it sends the value of that variable text and it blinks the lead off and on apparently now here we have if the client is unsuccessful it basically is going to send an error message of some sort and here is again here's a 404 message being sent yeah see here this is building up this variable message describing the error and then here's your error, error 404 with the contents of message being sent. Now here we're initializing the TTGO display board. This was the first thing that tripped me up here. This comes from the button demo, Serial Begin 9600. And if you look down here where I incorporated code from one of the other scripts, this is code from the TTGO T display board, I think. It set serial begin, you know, 115,200. <laughs> so it took me a while to figure out that I had, you know, those two were in conflict. And you have to be careful about that when you're copying code from a couple of different examples and bringing it all together. Then you have to make sure you're not making contradictory statements about the same thing. So this is just basically setting up Wi-Fi, waiting for the Wi-Fi to connect, informing that we've connected, starting the HTTP server, and then we go into our void loop. And our void loop is the HTTP server looks for a client connection. Button A and button B check to see if they've been pressed. And here we're actually going to echo out to the COM port that contents of the value text and then we go on to light up the TTGO T display with the contents of text in a particular font. And down here is just the handling code for the buttons. One of the really cool things you'll see here is I found the batteries online for these. 
and the board handles the charging. So right now I'm running on battery power. When I connect it via the USB-C connector, the battery charges. And I could tell that there's some level of voltage detection because it wouldn't initially go to battery unless I charged it for an extensive period of time. What I'm gonna do in probably a subsequent video is just put a voltage uh, display on there and then run the battery down and see if the board shuts down if it reaches the end of the battery without damaging the battery. I think that'll be important. But as you can see here, there's no wires connecting the client. The client is all by itself on a battery. So that's my HTTP client there and it's just flashing the number one. Let's go ahead and we're going to open the serial port here and have a chat with this have a chat with this web server and see what's on, going on in the serial display. Oh, let's check this out. Yeah, see, so remember I made that serial call to 9600. Okay, so we're gonna try that again. Let's get a power on. There's that power on. Loads the multiple buttons demo, because you're basically gonna see it connect up to the Wi-Fi. Anyway, so it's just repetitively checking the button and displaying the current value of the variable text. Remember we set that to 1 up at the top here. String text equals 1. Now watch what happens when I push the button here. I push button B and string text is populated with the value 2. Okay. Now this is going to become interesting and what I'm going to demonstrate with the web client is the web client's going to catch on to that fact. So we can see here if I press that button, button A turns it to 1, button B sets it to 2. I'm just going to open a browser page here. You see right now, yeah, it's displaying the word 2. So basically we accomplished what we wanted to do with the web server. We connect via Wi-Fi, start the web server, display the contents of the variable text, respond to the buttons, and update the web content and change the display. And again, we've combined the examples, all free fonts demo, hello server, and multiple buttons. I'll be sure to share the code with you. Look for links in the description down below. So now let's talk about the web client. The web client's gonna be somewhat simpler because we don't have to respond to buttons. So we're really just gonna have the all free fonts demo and the basic HTTP client demo. So I'll, I'll show you where that code is under the examples here. So that was the 320 by 240 all free fonts demo. And then up here is the HTTP client. And this is just the basic HTTP client. And so I combined the two of those, the TTGO T display all free fonts demo. So you can see here the Wi-Fi is brought in, the HTTP client library. We call the SPI and TFT and free fonts libraries. Again, that free fonts file needs to reside in the same folder as that fonts free file has to reside in the same folder as your INO file. They say that here, include the header file attached to this sketch. Uh, the other ones, it manages to find them. Uh, we go ahead and hook up to Wi-Fi, initialize the display, start a serial port, although we're not gonna use the serial port. Then we input our SSID and password to connect to Wi-Fi. We wait for Wi-Fi to connect, and once Wi-Fi is connected, we just loop through getting HTTP from this URL that we've specified. We handle any errors. And then if we get HTTP code OK, we go ahead and get the string and set that value in the variable payload. Send the contents of payload out to the serial port so we can check it on the console and then also display it on the screen. So between these two, the web client and the web server, we're gonna have an interesting interaction here. I'm gonna detach web server so you can see it's not, it's truly not on a wire here. So this is my web server. Watch closely as I press button B. Display switches to two, client 
display switches to two. And let's get this back out where you can see it better. I'll go ahead and see if I can zoom in a little bit. So here again, I'm going to press button one. Server displays button one. Client displays button one. Button two. Sometimes there's a little lag because client has a uh, thousand millisecond delay in the loop, whereas this, I had to take the thousand millisecond delay out. We should talk about that real quick because that caused me no end of consternation. I actually worked on this code for almost, you know, two days worth of free time. There, so basically you have a simple on, off, yes, no, right, left, up, down, remote control. Obviously you could hook a sensor to your web server and be displaying the value of the sensor instead and transmitting the value of the sensor. Or you could have the state of some, like the, the door is open, the door is closed, that sort of thing. So this is a really simple yet effective demonstration of some of the capabilities of these TT Go boards. Yeah, I wanted to go back and talk about, so I highlighted the one problem where I called out serial twice here at 9600 and then again at 115,200. That's not hard to figure out because you're looking at the console and you get a clear message, then you get a garbled message and so you know, okay, there's a mismatch there somewhere. So I had to ferret that out. But initially, when I combined all of these together, I could not get the server to respond to the buttons in any way, shape, or form. It just would not respond to me pressing the buttons. And the reason was, in the loop right here, there's a delay of a thousand milliseconds for a whole entire second, and then it goes on. So if I were to press the button during that delay, nothing would have happened. And then I would have had to have pressed the button precisely between the point that delay let go and we went through the loop and came back to the delay again. So it only showed one over and over again, no matter what button I pressed, how long I held the button down, any of that. But I'm pretty satisfied with the state that I've got these in here and I wanna start looking at some other TTGO projects. So anyway, I hope you really enjoyed that. Anyway, go ahead and click on my microprocessor playlist or you can click subscribe over there. That would be really cool. Thank you very much. Thank you for watching Shotoku Tech. Please subscribe, comment, like, and share.